This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 187, Four Cooking Tips That Will End Your Recipe Guessing, by Chef Todd Moore with bengreenfieldfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there, with author permission, of course. Now, today features a guest post from Ben Greenfield's site. It's written by an actual chef, so hopefully you'll find these tips useful. And I personally am super excited to read this particular post to you all. What's funny is people automatically assume that because I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, that I automatically know everything there is to know about food and cooking also. And that's really not the case. What was actually really disappointing for me when I was going through school is that we actually don't learn a whole lot about food and cooking. We learn a lot about, okay, the body needs so much potassium and magnesium and protein and carbs, so we do a lot of math, but we don't end up translating all of that math to real food. I know it probably sounds really surprising, right? Like, how is that possible? It's just the nature of going through a dietetics program in many schools. But when I was actually practicing and working with real patients and clients, what did they want to know most? What should I eat? tell me what to eat. What are some recipes? I didn't have any of those. So I had to actually spend a lot of time on the web trying to find healthy, nutritious recipes and hoping that if I run them through a statistical program, they'll meet all of these macro and micronutrient requirements that I've set for them. So I'm always into learning about how to cook better and more efficiently. Because again, it's not something I was specifically trained for. So with that, Let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. Four Cooking Tips That Will End Your Recipe Guessing by Chef Todd Moore with bengreenfieldfitness.com. Cooking is not made easy when you're still guessing. In fact, guessing at cooking increases the stress because guessing makes you unsure of the results to come. I'm gonna give you a little cooking help by offering some tips on how to end your guessing. One of the reasons that you guess is because it's hard to believe something until you can actually see it. But I wanna help you to wrap your head around the idea that you have to believe it first and then you'll see it. Quantifying your portion sizes, temperature, and testing are great ways to allow you to stop guessing. Let's go ahead and look at how that might work. Four ways to quantify your cooking and eliminate guessing. Cooking tip number one, temperature. Temperature is important in cooking. Some foods will make you sick if you don't cook them at the right temperature. Other foods will be utterly destroyed if you cook them much above, quote, medium heat. Use water as an indicator of temperature. Water evaporates at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius, which is easier to use. So if you're using a saute pan, if you sprinkle a little water in the pan and it evaporates, you know that the pan is at least at the boiling point of water. The quicker the water evaporates, the hotter your pan is. This works on the grill as well. You can also test a small piece of your food to test for temperature. For example, maybe you're gonna fry some chicken in oil on the stove, but you can't tell if the oil is hot enough or not. Don't ruin a whole chicken breast by putting it into oil that's not hot enough. Instead, take a small piece of the chicken and drop it in the pan. You'll know right away whether the oil is hot enough or not to cook your food. Cooking tip number two, test a small quantity. Sometimes you just need to test a small quantity of something before cooking the whole thing. This is especially helpful in roasting. I can tell you that when I had my catering business, sometimes we would have to make hundreds or thousands of crab cakes in one big batch. Well, we would take one crab cake, cook it, and test it. This would allow us to make adjustments on the rest of the batch and make a superior product. Cooking or roasting a small piece of something is a great way to see if your plan is going to work without sacrificing all of your ingredients during one of your guessing adventures. Cooking tip number three, portion size. Get a digital scale and begin to understand your raw portion sizes. Let me tell you a story about how I discovered the importance of this tip. When I used to make spaghetti for myself and my wife, I would cook a whole pound of spaghetti, basically one whole box for the two of us. When we sat down to eat, because so much spaghetti was available, we ate more than we should have. After finishing our meal, there was always spaghetti left over. We would put the leftover spaghetti in the refrigerator and a few days later, throw it out because we wouldn't eat it. With my digital scale, I started by weighing eight ounces of dry pasta for the two of us. 
I cooked the eight ounces and still had some left over. So I adjusted it down until I knew exactly how much dry pasta to cook for the two of us. 5.3 ounces is our perfect amount. Knowing this finally made cooking pasta easy. We don't overeat and we don't have leftovers. Understanding and knowing your portion sizes will also help you to not overbuy at the grocery store because you'll know exactly how much to buy of a product to feed your family for a particular meal. And make sure you stick to the portion sizes. If you're cooking frozen shrimp from a bag and the portions end up leaving three shrimp in the bag, don't just dump them in the meal and cook them. No, you'll be feeding too much to your family. Leave them in the bag and cook them the next time. You don't have to just make the whole package all of the time. Cooking tip number four, test spices. If you're making a pot of something and you need to add spices, don't start throwing in the spices and guess what it's going to taste like. Get the spices that you're thinking about using and put the concoction in a small ramekin or small souffle cup first. This will help you to know how the flavors work and give you the confidence that the combination is going to work. So by using these quantifying cooking tips, you can stop guessing at what's happening to your food. Observe your results and purposely alter your steps for the next time. You will be amazed at how starting with these little visual cues can help you to stop guessing and be confident that what you see is what you believe will be true. This isn't guessing. This is cooking made easy. You just listened to the post titled, Four Cooking Tips That Will End Your Recipe Guessing by Chef Todd Moore with bengreenfieldfitness.com. Now, of course, I'm a big believer in portion sizes, so I love cooking tip number three. We tend to overeat, especially if we're not paying attention to portions. So as a dietitian, one of the things we definitely learned in school was how much of what we should be eating. But one of the tips I really, really love, especially when it comes to refining that taste, is to test a small quantity of food first. That's something I've been doing with my homemade uh, turkey burgers and homemade turkey meatballs, for example. So what I'll do is I'll cook very miniature versions of a burger or a meatball and then taste it. I wanna make sure that the salt is right, that there's enough flavor in each bite, and then I'll adjust accordingly. That's probably one of the most useful tips to really refine what you want your food to taste like. Now, before I go, I mentioned this last week, but it's worth mentioning again. The Minimalists recently donated 60 books to us, and Leon from the Kindness Diary series on Netflix also sent 25 books, and we'll be giving them away in raffles to people on our mailing list. So, if you want to be a part of that, plus get free spreadsheet tools from us, a weekly email with more tips, life quotes, and more, come by oldpodcast.com and join the mailing list for free. All right, that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another post from JC Dean. So stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism, from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.